a very good example of a combination of a translational and rotational motion is a rolling ring. If you look at the path traced by a point on the circumference of a ring, then its motion seems to be quite complicated. However, the center of mass of the ring can be seen to be moving in a straight line. If we switch our frame of reference to the center of mass of the ring, then the ball appears to be having only a rotational motion. Let us attach a ring to a movable rod at its center of mass and then give it a rotational motion. Now, if we move the rod like this, the motion of the ring is similar to the ring rolling on the ground. That is to say that the rolling motion of a ring can be split into a pure translational motion and a pure rotational motion about its center of mass. This is effectively similar to resolving a vector into components. So the motion of any point on the ring will be the vector sum of the translational motion and the rotational motion. Similarly, velocity of this point will be equal to v minus omega r. An interesting point from this equation is that if the linear and the angular velocity of a rolling object is such that v is equal to omega r, then the instantaneous velocity of this point will be equal to zero. That is, the point in contact with the surface is momentarily at rest. In fact, if we look at the motion of a rolling ring, we can say that the distance moved by its center of mass will be equal to this length of its circumference, which can be written in terms of angle theta as r into theta. Differentiating this equation with respect to time, we can say that the velocity of center of mass will be equal to r into the angular velocity of the object, which is in fact the case. Such a rolling is also known as pure rolling. If we consider such a motion of this object, then though the object is moving forward, but its point of contact does not move. After a while, the point of contact is a different point, but still, as long as it is the point of contact, its velocity relative to ground is zero. Now, if we increase the number of sides of our object, then the point of contact will change more frequently, but the instantaneous velocity of the point of contact remains zero. Increasing the number of sides to an extent that it becomes a round object, we can say that though its point of contact will change every instant, but just for the moment that point is in contact with the ground, its instantaneous velocity is zero.